In this video, I'm going to be explaining what multi-threading is in under three minutes. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video of a series I like to call Tech Explained in Under Three, where we attempt to explain tech concepts in, well, you've guessed it again, under three minutes. And in today's video, we will talk about a concept which gave me such a hard time in the beginning until I fully grasped it. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. If you look inside any computer or laptop, you'll always find a central processing unit, or CPU. Among many other things it's responsible for, the CPU dictates how many processes can be executed at the same time, and that's based on how many cores it actually contains. So what is that process really? In its simplest terms, a process is simply the execution of any of the computer programs. So this can be anything from you opening up your browser, to you opening up Microsoft Word, for example, to Spotify, to whatever it is that you use. So circling back to this cores processor processes thing, this means that if you have four cores processor then you can have four processes running simultaneously and if you have eight cores processor then you can have eight processes running simultaneously and by that same logic if you've got 16 cores processor then you can have 16 processes running simultaneously and so on you get the picture so how is it then that even though almost all laptops nowadays have four cores processors they're able to run way more than just four programs or processes at the same time that's an excellent question and this is where the multi-processing and multi-threading execution models come into play in this video we're going to focus on multi-threading and in the next video we're going to talk about multiprocessing. Multi-threading is defined as a type of operating system execution model that allows any computer process to have multiple code segments which are called threads such that these code segments or threads can be executed independently and concurrently but they also share the same process resources. It is important to know that when we talk about multi-threading we usually talk about threads in the context of a single core of a processor and even though that's not always the case and threads can actually span multiple cores it's beyond the scope of our discussion now and we can just think of threads in a single core of a processor. All right, that's a lot of big talk we said here, but don't worry if you're confused. We're about to unravel this mystery with an analogy because you know how much I love analogies. But before jumping into our analogy section of the video, we need to discuss a very important concept and it's called concurrency. By concurrency, you might think that I'm referring to the ability of executing things at the same time or in like a parallel fashion. However, it's very important to make the distinction that concurrency is not the same thing as parallelism. Even though they might seem like they function in the same way, they really don't. As a human being with a human brain, you might like to think that you're a multitasking super being and can do more than one thing at a time. Like, I don't know, clean the house while watching a TV show, for example. But in reality, you really, really can't. You just think you can because your brain is really good at what's known as context switching, which means that it's really, really good at shifting your attention quickly from one thing to the next, giving you the illusion of parallelism. Although technically, you're only working on a single thing or focusing at a single thing at a time. Whether that single thing you're focusing on is the TV show you're watching and cleaning is just on autopilot, or you're focusing on cleaning and you just have the TV show run in the background, this concurrent nature of our brain and thereof the lack of parallelism is exactly why we should never text and drive or be on a call and cook. Both lead to equally detrimental results. This execution method of progressing multiple tasks in which context is shifted rapidly from one operation to the next giving us the illusion of like parallel behavior is exactly what we call concurrency. All right, so let's pick up where we left off with a restaurant analogy from the last video. Let's say you go to a restaurant A and that restaurant has just this one cook or in this case a single core of a processor. Every day, that cook, or that single core in this case, begins his job or process of cooking meals for the customers. This cook, however, is not a very efficient cook. He can only work on one order or a thread at a time and has to complete it before he's able to work on another order or a thread in this case. Even though each order takes about 15 minutes to cook, he's only busy for five of those 15 because each order or thread in this case involves five minutes of active preparation time followed by 10 minutes of cooking time on the stove. Since the 10 minute cooking time doesn't require any active participation from that chef, he's just idle until the food is cooked, or in this case, until the thread finishes its execution. Now, if you're going to a restaurant, you might think that this 15 minute wait time isn't so bad, right? It's actually quite normal if you really think about it. However, imagine the case when you have four people queuing before you. That's a complete hour before the cook or that single core even attends to your order, or the thread in this case. Not really an ideal scenario, and probably not a restaurant I would want to visit twice. This is exactly what would happen in a single core processor that doesn't support multi-threading. The operating system would start a thread in the process and would have to wait on it until it completes execution before starting the next thread, even if there's a lot of idle time in this execution. Not really a very efficient execution model, especially if that thread execution involves a lot of idle time. Now, let's consider a different restaurant B. Let's say this restaurant also has only one cook or a single core of processor, but this cook is much, much more efficient than the cook from restaurant A, in the sense that he knows better than to wait idly until those 10 cooking minutes elapse before starting 
on with the next order or thread in this case. Once he's done with the five minute active preparation phase of an order or a thread in this case, and the food is already on the stove, he starts preparing the next order right away or starts executing with the next thread. With the same four people in the queue, the cook would in this case attend to your order in about 20 minutes rather than a whole hour like in the case with restaurant A. Now, that's way better and probably a restaurant that I would want to visit again. This model of execution is what execution looks like in a single core of processor that supports multi-threading. In the same way this chef was able to optimize his process and reduce his delivery time by using concurrency, the operating system is able to utilize the multi-threading execution model to execute segments or threads that don't rely on one another both independently and concurrently. Like our brains, operating systems are really really good at context switching from one thread to the next in a very fast way that gives us the illusion of parallelism. And time. I'm not really good at this three minutes thing, am I? Oh well, whatever. I hope this was helpful in helping you understand what multi-threading is. You probably wanna hit that subscribe button so that you get notified once I release my next video on multi-processing. That being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.